It was a rainy day in Seattle and I was dropping my girlfriend Haven home after an early dinner at my house. Haven and I have been dating for two years now and I think it's been the most beautiful two years of my life. Not only are we madly in love, but our families love us together. It truly feels like I found the one. I'll wait here while you go in. I parked my car outside Haven's house. I honked two to three times and saw her parents open the door. I gave her a peck on her cheek as she opened her umbrella and got down from the car. She ran off to the door and then she and her parents waved to me. She ran off to the door and then she and her parents waved to me as I began reversing my car to leave. When I got home, my parents were watching the TV while my sister, Karen, was upstairs in her room. I need to tell them today. I thought to myself. I called out to Karen and told them that I had an important announcement. As I saw them all seated on the couch, staring at me intently, I felt a little nervous, but all the more confident. I am going to ask Haven to marry me. My parents shrieked out of joy while my Karen screamed, What? I think she is the one for me. Oh, come on, George. It's just been two years and you're so young. Oh, honey, me and your father got married young. If you think it's the best, we are with you. I agree. Haven seems to be the perfect addition. What are you guys talking about? You're really just going to let him marry her? He's just 23. We don't even know her that well. Karen, you love Haven. You keep asking me when she's going to come over, and then you spend so much time with her. I actually have to come and ask you to give us pace. George, that's all for fun. This is so much more serious. Why are you getting so angry? It's my decision, and even mom and dad think it's great. There is no way you are marrying her. Karen got up pushing the coffee table with her foot, causing and storming off to her room. All of us just stared at her puzzled. Is she okay? Maybe she's shocked. She'll come around tomorrow. We know how much she adores Haven. Perhaps she feels bad because you are younger than her, but marrying before her. I'll talk to her, don't worry. Now come on, get up, you've got so much to prepare. Yes, of course. How about you stay here today? The rain is coming down harshly. I'll be worried if you drive in this weather. I smiled at her. Okay. I'll be up in my old room then. I had moved out of the house a few months ago. Karen had also moved in and out multiple times. Somehow she would leave and always come back. I went up to my old room and began to scatter my things in my cupboards and drawers to find some old clothes to sleep in. I found some old pictures of me and Haven in the drawers. However, someone had cut them up in halves. And the ones in the drawers only had me. She had been cut out. I went through all the pictures and they were all the same. I suddenly felt a wedge in my heart. Who had done this and why? I kept the pictures in my bag and planned that I'd ask if someone had been up to my room. I fell asleep very late as my mind kept drifting to the cut up pictures on the desk. The next morning, I sat at the table for breakfast and right after we had eaten, I showed them the cut up pictures in my room. They were as shocked as I was, if not more. There was no one who had gone up there except the family, which was just my parents, Karen, and I. Karen had definitely gotten angry when I had mentioned proposing to Haven, but I don't think she'd go so far, would she? When Karen didn't come down for breakfast, I went up to check in her room. I knocked for a while before she opened the door. She looked sleepy with her haphazard hair and red swollen eyes. The lights were still off as well. Are you okay? Sure. What's the matter, Karen? I don't think you should marry Haven. What? Are you serious? Is all of this just for that? I... You are my brother. I care about you. I don't think she's the right person for you. Karen, you have absolutely no reason to say this. Haven is great, and you know that. I started to get angry as she was being so unreasonable. No, you shouldn't marry her. In fact... I won't let you. I'll make sure you never marry her. I'm not waiting on your approval, Karen. You may or may not come to the wedding, but if Haven says yes, it's happening. I was trying extremely hard to stay calm. Oh, there's no way. I'll do whatever I have to to stop you. She went towards her bed and picked up an empty beer bottle from the bedstand. I'll kill myself if I have to. Stop! I ran towards and pulled her towards me harshly, causing the beer bottle to slip from her hands and shatter on the floor. My parents had heard the concussion and had come to check up on us. 
What's happening? I am in love with Haven. What? I love her. I am obsessed. I can't live without her, George. Don't marry her, please. Karen, what are you even saying? You're making no sense. I like girls, George. Not any girl, though. Just Haven. I love her. I won't let you take her from me. She went towards her cupboard and threw out some of her clothes to show as a collage of pictures. All of them were of Haven, and some of them were the cutouts of the pictures in my room. I didn't know what to say or do, so I just stared silently. I need her in my life. If you marry her, it will never happen. Karen, I... All this... What even is all this? I don't think Haven even likes you in that way. She will. She will have to, eventually. I looked at her. Her eyes were red and she was crying. She was completely out of her mind. I couldn't even reason with her in this state. I, I need some air. We can talk about this later. I left the house feeling all sorts of emotions. I was disgusted with my sister. She had always met Haven as my girlfriend. How she had developed these feelings for her was beyond me. I felt guilty and sad for her as well. But more than anything, I was afraid for Haven. All those pictures in her cupboards, her desperation, it didn't seem healthy at all. I walked to my house instead of taking my car. It was a long walk. And by the time I reached my home, I was soaking wet from the rain. I took a long shower and changed my clothes and then called up Haven. She finally picked up on the seventh call. Haven, where? George! Karen, I... She's driving so fast and she won't stop. We're on the Idaho Highway. She's saying that no one can marry me. She's not listening to me. And we're on the highway. I rushed to the landline and called the police. I informed them where they were. And then I took a cab and rushed towards the highway myself. I kept Haven on the call with me. And when I finally heard some sirens, I felt a little calmer. Soon enough, I heard an officer say, We've got it from here, Mr. George, on the call before he hung up. When I got there, Haven was sitting in the police car. I noticed that my parents' jeep was also there. I rushed towards her and gave her a long hug. Are you okay? I asked her. Yes. I don't know what was wrong with her. Why were you out with her? And why didn't you tell me you were meeting her? She told me that she was feeling a bit down and a drive with me would help. She said that I shouldn't call you as you're busy planning a surprise for me and... I don't know. I didn't think it was important. I meet her for shopping a lot of times. Oh, I'm so glad you were safe. I filled her in with whatever had happened at home and she stared at me in shock. I never knew. I didn't either. So what about Karen? What are they doing now? I saw Karen, sitting at the back of one of the police vans and handcuffs in her wrists. They said they'll be pressing charges on her for endangering her in my life. Might even send her to some rehabilitation center for some help for her mental health. Hmm. I will go report everything that happened at home as well. Karen does need help. And honestly, on our part, we'll help her to get that help. So, uh, you were going to propose? My eyes widened. Somehow, I had also told her that when I was telling her about the incidents at home. I, I, yes, I'm sorry. Don't be. It's a good idea. She winked at me and gave me a shy smile. Karen had been in custody since that incident, and I was so angry with everything she had done that I decided to simply never talk to her again. My parents were also maintaining a distance from her, but keeping a check on her health. If she comes back, change and healthier, perhaps we will think about reconciliation. I had eventually proposed to Haven at a small cafe in the outskirts of our city. We were planning on getting married within the year, and for the time being, Haven had started to live with me. My parents had come to an understanding of what was happening with Karen, and they were adjusting and dealing with it the best they could. Life was as happy as it could be.